Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praises to the Most High, yeah. I do hope that you are well and that you are rejoicing and you are the Elohim of your salvation. It is a rainy day in the Bahamas today, but you got to work. So I'm heading to work. Uh, but I just wanted to stop and say a quick word to specifically, specifically my sisters today. You know, I wanted to share this during the Feast um, of Unleavened Bread, but I didn't think it would have been the right time. So um, I put it off and I decided to just do it now. But it was something that I want to share with you, a thought that I want to share with you. And I'm going to read to you a post that I shared on Facebook, March 28. And it says, the nigger woman is the mool of the world. That quote was taken from The Eyes Were Watching God by Sarah Neal Hurston. And I went on to say that more black women need to experience their black man standing up for them. The black woman is the most unprotected, unappreciated, devalued woman by her black man than any other race. Whether the slap was reactive or not, I am happy he did it, especially seeing his woman was not happy about the comment made. And of course, you would have realized that that would have been around the time when they had the slapping incident at the award ceremony with the famous people. So that was my post that I wrote in response to it because someone shared the video with me via WhatsApp. I had seen the news headline somewhere on Facebook or something, but I didn't pay any attention to it. But when the video came to me without opening it or listening to it, I watched it. And I saw when he smiled and looked at her and then I saw her face and he got up and I was shocked at his response. But immediately my first thought was he, you know, he wanted to protect her. Okay. So, you know, there's a, there, there had been a lot of, there is maybe, I don't know, feedback about him regarding that. But that was my takeaway. Because a black woman, as a black woman, I don't know what it is to feel protected. And I find that a lot of our black men, we, they go in on us and they criticize us and they put us down. But very few, and we have had very few incidents where the black man publicly stood up and supported, defended the black woman. You understand me? And so that, seeing that, it felt good. And I've heard many other black women um, had the same sentiments, whereas you had some who felt indifferent and they made comments about the woman's history, her past, and, and the situation that, you know, was exposed from their marriage. And to me, well, that was still the position he took for whatever reason um, regarding what was said about his wife, you know. So, but there were some who felt that because it was her and what she had done, he should not have done it. I heard, I even saw a comment by another black woman saying that protecting or defending a woman who is unworthy of that. And my thing is, well, he decided to stay for whatever reason and whatever. But that's not the main thing. So during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, no, before that, I think I heard her response to it because I was waiting to hear the woman's response. And it was something to the point where she didn't appreciate it. She said that he overreacted and she, this is what got me. She is not the woman, a woman that needs to be protected. And when I read that, all sorts of, anyway, I was like, what? What you know, she doesn't need to be protected. And I was like, what kind of woman doesn't need to be protected? And I felt some kind of way because I had already made this post. <laughs> you understand me? And I stand by it. I still feel that there are we as black women, we need that. We are unprotected, we are unappreciated, we're devalued. We are actually the nigger, the mool. We are the mool of the world. This is what Sora Neil Austin wrote. 
And I, I agree with that. Our history um, portrays that. But when I hear this is the same, she doesn't need to be protected. I was like, wow, what kind of a woman of any race feel as if she doesn't need to be protected? And I said, um, first I thought about her husband and how he must have felt knowing that he went through all of that. There were all kind of negative things that were said about him. And I haven't heard any response from him yet regarding except when he apologized to the individually at head but to have your wife come out and say you overreacted and you didn't need to be protected i said that brother must have felt emasculated all the way down you understand and i was like what kind of a woman feel as if she is with a man her husband and she don't need him to protect her i said something is very wrong with that because what is the job of your man? I believe that I'm one of the, a man's main responsibility to his woman is to protect her. In fact, that is the reason I believe um, the most, I, I mean, besides from us being a help me to a man, but his job and his duty is to protect, to provide. That, that, that all comes in with covering that's what a covering does. It protects. And so when you have sisters saying, oh, I don't need a man to protect me. Sister, you out. Of, like I heard somebody say out of pocket. You out of pocket. You out of order. You are really out of order. And this is what I wanted to say to my sisters. If you have that mentality where you don't need a man to protect you, sisters, you got to check yourself. You really have to check yourself because you're out of order. Something is going on. Do you understand? Because we were created, our position as women is one that requires protection for all kind of reason, physical, mental, emotional. We are vulnerable. You know, I know for me as a woman, that is one of my greatest desire to have a man over me where I can feel protected. And that is why this period where I've been single and, and went through that divorce, I feel sometimes, I feel like, I'm just all alone and and I supposed to have someone there to um that I can know that I am safe that I know if something happens regarding me he is going to be the one to say no baby I I get this and to to be that that covering and that is what I know I need and I thank the father that he brought me to the place where I truly understand the purpose of a man and a woman and his woman you understand? I thank the Father. And only the most I could have done that. You know, because after my divorce, I too had the attitude and I was angry and I was bitter. And I didn't even realize I was so bitter. I was becoming so bitter. But my attitude was at that time too. I don't need no man to protect me. I was saying to the Father, look, I just need to make some money, take care of my two children, and I'm good. But from then to now, when having to be here and you're dealing with everything and you don't have no one to talk to, you don't have no one to turn to, you don't have no one to just give you a support, emotional support, emo um, mental support, um, someone to just say, hey, what you think about this? And to, to go to them with ideas and let them say to you, well, you know, I think you should do this or I got you with this or whatever. Listen, that is a, that is a real, really, that's a big part that is really missing and I understand now how important it is I didn't get that in my marriage but now that I'm seeking the father and I'm learning his way and I'm looking at the from a scriptures point of view and a brick point of view I understand the importance of it so this is why I can too say to sisters who feel as if you don't need a man and you don't need a man to protect you you're broken you're broken and you're saying that from a broken place. And we need healing. We need healing. And it's so amazing. I got something last night that we are in the month, the new month. Um, let me see if I can find it. I think, yeah, it's so good. Because we're in the new month of, yes, I'm going to find it. Yes. We're in the new month, Rosh Kadesh Avara. And this month, let me read this because this is so beautiful and powerful. Man, you understand, I didn't even intend to do this. But the month of uh, uh, Yah, 
is a set, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but it's spelled I-Y-A-H. It's a set time to obtain healing wisdom. Not just knowledge that pops off, but wisdom that gives you the awareness of what you need healed. The protocols for the actions you need to take to heal and the empowerment of the Ruah Akadesh to pick up your mat and walk. Aya is a month of... Oh, this is Hebrew here. Um, Refua Shema, but it means... And I'm going to spell that R E, I don't have on my glasses, R E F U A H S H L E M A, complete healing. This is now, see, I had planned to do it a while back, but this fit right in with where we are because the, this is the month. We need complete healing, sisters. We need complete healing. We need healing in our mind. We need healing in our emotions. We need healing, wisdom healing to make good decisions because I can say for me as a woman, I don't sometimes, I, sometimes I make my each decisions emotional. You understand me? Very emotional and, and it, it comes from a place where I'm crying out where I know now that I need that presence, that protection of a man. You understand? But what brought on this thought doing Feasts of Unleavened Bread was that during that time, here in the Bahamas, a report came out regarding a former classmate of mine who had been killed by her husband. He went home and in his anger, I guess they were having some issue, but he took her knife and he stabbed her and viciously and and, and has their son, who was trying to stop his dad from stabbing the mother, got stabbed to his back. And so they were both hospitalized, but the mother died two days after the attack. And this happened in 2013. This would have happened exactly two days after my divorce was granted. You know, and my mother called me very early that morning, very upset because I was still living in the house with my my ex-husband at the time. And she was like, get out, get out, get out. You know, because look what he went and did to her. You understand? And so it was very bothersome. It's very sad because I knew her personally. You understand me? Her sister and I were in the same grade, but she was a year ahead of us. And because I knew the character of her, I was so hurt. Very humble. You understand? She was a pharmacist. But I knew how they grew up. Very intelligent, very humble. You know, she grew up in church. We used to fellowship sometime in church. And I remember those weekends in um, church because that's their family was, you know, mom and dad was pastors or something like that. And he killed them. And to hell, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the report came out that the court here had decided to nolly the case. Nolly meaning that they had decided not to prosecute the husband because according to them, the son who was the main witness did not want to testify. Now look here, this is almost 10 years later. You understand me? And so her husband reportedly, according to this system, was set free. And that bothered me. And so when I heard that, I thought of this system. I say you can see what's going on with us you have a sister over here saying oh i don't need you to protect me and on the other hand other side we have our sisters who may be looking for their husband for that protection but instead they are being stabbed to death they are being beaten they are being abused viciously you are you 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 understand they are being i mean just demoralized in some instance we had a sister i, I may have mentioned this who children daddy ran the car over her while she was holding the baby in the hand we had another young sister whose boyfriend shot her to the head while she was breastfeeding their one month old but we have another sister here who had a man jeopardize his career to defend her and her response is i don't need to be protected do you see and so I, I was like, something is really wrong with that. So my message to our sisters, we all need to be protected. 
We need to be protected. We need to have men who are going to protect us, who are going to fight for us, who are going to stand up for us, who is who who are going to defend us, who are going to support us. They are going to protect us not only physically, but mentally, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. We are in the place we were created by the Most High to be protected. And any sister who was saying they don't need that, mama used to say you're flying in the face of God. Because you're saying to the Most High, you didn't know what you were doing. You understand me? And so if any sister I'm watch, you who's watching this, who have that view, I, I'm going to encourage you to, to repent. And ask the Most High to heal your emotions, to heal your mind, heal your spirit and help you align yourself back up with His purpose for you as a woman. That's what I want to do. I want to encourage my sisters. Listen, I have been abused. I've been burnt and left for dead. Listen, when I look back years ago, what I walked through, I felt like I was just the lowest of all females. The lowest. Do you understand me? Because there's nothing like when you would have entered into a wedding agreement, a marriage agreement, covenant with a man and to have him be the one to cast you aside and, and whatever. My former classmate husband killed them. We've had many sisters whose husband have treated them um, like that. You know, just beat them down and caused them to lose their mind or even took their life. Whereas we have sisters, other sisters who have the man in their life wanting to be to them what they need. To protect them, to defend them. And that sister saying, I don't need you. You emasculating your mind. Something is wrong with the sister who take that position. Something is really wrong with any sister who takes that position. And I want to encourage you to check yourself. You need to be completely healed. You really need to be completely healed. So if you are in that place right now in this month, I want to encourage you to seek the most high for complete healing. Ask him to heal you. We need healing. I need healing. You understand? I'm before the Father right now seeking him to bring order to my life, to bring order to my home. Because being a single woman, it's not easy. And it, it makes you feel vulnerable. And this is the reason why I thank the Father for this head covering. Because since I started covering my head, believe it or not, I feel more protected. I feel safe. And the reason I feel safe is because I am not getting all of that attention from males. You understand me? Because I guess this head covering is making a statement about me. And so I'm not getting that attention. So I know the man who's going to approach me, he's going to look past this and see me and whatever. So I thank the father for this. You understand me? We all as women... Sisters, we need to be protected. You understand me? We need to be protected. And we need to allow the men, the males, to do that for us. You understand me? So, and I wanted to say here, I'm not saying to you now to go out and just get a man to say, oh, a male to say, oh, he's going to protect me. You understand me? You need not just a good man. We need good men. But you need the right man. Do you understand me? The right man for you. Who is going to cover you. You understand? So that's what we're waiting on. We are looking and waiting for the right man. Not just a good man. Because a good man. My ex-husband was a good man. Everyone thought he was good. And I'm not taking that away from him. But he wasn't the right one for me. Because he was not capable of providing for me the covering that I need. And so you need the right man who was going to provide you with that covering. Who was going to be there for you in, to support your emotions when you're feeling vulnerable. He don't make you feel as if, oh, you're just too emotional. Oh, you just need to get it together. But he is going to comfort you, console you and try to calm you down. And try to be that support for you. You need the right man who's going to support all of your initiative, your giftings, 
You understand who can be there for you to back you up. If someone try to take advantage of you, he's going to defend you. And you need that man who's going to be there. If someone come trying to be ash with you, we can step in the front and say, uh-uh. No, no, no. Not her. You know, you got to go through me. So, yes, we need that. We need that. And so I want to encourage you, like me, wait on that man who is going to, the right man to be your protection and your covering because we need to be protected, sisters. We need to be protected. And that's all I want to say, share with you today. I think it was something else, <laughs> but I'll make another video on that. Because I'm sure it was something else. Not about the same thing, but anyway. So y'all be all the glory and all the praise. So I hope you hear me and um, you understand what I'm saying. But sister, you have a man there who is providing that covering for you and protecting you and looking out for you. Let him be. You know, pray for him in his shortcomings. Um, but don't emasculate your man. Don't ever look at him and say, I don't need you. I don't need you to protect me. I don't need. Because I can be honest with you, sisters. I don't know how some of these brothers is be intimate with some females. Because I don't know. Because you you taking away all of his his men. His, you just you just basically cut off his manhood. When you can take that position. How you expect him now to you know, and, and, and to what would you if you say to the man, I don't need you to protect me and all that too, would you just need him for sex? You understand? Come on, we gotta get it right. You just need him there for money. You know, something is wrong with that, sister. So if that's your attitude, your mindset, I want you to repent before the most high. Ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you. I tell you, I've been through this period of cleansing, going through it. Because I need complete healing. And you do the same and ask the Father to bring you back in alignment with his purpose. The purpose for which he has created you. You understand? You need to be in alignment because you're out of alignment. If that's your mindset, you are out of alignment with the will of the Most High for you as a woman. So, shalom, shalom. Blessings to you. I love you. And um, we, are, we, are, we are sisters. And I'm saying this to you, sister to sister. Okay? We need to be protected. Allow that man, the right man, to protect you. Shalom.